Hello and welcome to another episode of how to build a compiler with LLVM and MLIR. Uh, this is your host Samir and in today's episode we're going to talk about IR generation. Before we jump to the main topic, I have a few updates. So in the master branch, I finished up a really basic source manager. What is a source manager? I'm going to have a dedicated, uh, a dedicated episode about uh, my changes in that area. I created a diagnostic engine to report back errors, issues, and things like that. It's very basic. It works only uh, in the parser level at the moment, but it has all the, um, what do you say, like foundation that we need to create a, like a full-fledged um, engine. And I did all that to resume my work on the JIT. So that's what I'm uh, doing these days. Uh, obviously, I'm going to create a dedicated episode for each of them. But if you look into the master branch today, you might not find everything that we talked about in previous episodes. That's because every episode has its own dedicated branch. And today's uh, Git branch, like the Git branch for episode nine, which is today's episode, is based on episode eight, not based on master. Uh, little by little, uh, we uh, I'm going to introduce new features and uh, eventually the, we're going to catch up with master. Okay, uh, so oops, sorry. Do, 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 sorry, made a mess. Okay. Okay, so uh, for today's topic, uh, let's have a look at how like we create uh, an IR representation. It's a high level discussion, uh, but I'm going to show you some code as well. Uh, we're not going to go in depth into the like IR, like the details of the current IR that we have because we don't care at this stage. We want just a bare minimum uh, compiler. We want the wiring as you remember from a uh, previous episode. So if you remember, uh, we talked about a class that we have called serene context. Basically, this is like the state, the yeah, the state of the compiler, we pass it around, uh, we pass a reference uh, to the uh, reference of certain context around, uh, and it owns everything. Uh, one of the things that it owns is a, another type of context, which is MLIR context, that is important for today's topic. So MLIR context uh, is the similar concept to serene context, but for MLIR. It contains all the types, basically whatever you need to uh, use MLIR. And we, by passing serene context around, we obviously passing MLIR context around as well. And we use the MLIR conte uh, context to create something called a builder. The builder class, the builder object is responsible for creating operations and operations, if you remember from the previous episodes are the building blocks of MLIR and different dialects that we might want to create. But uh, there's two things, uh, like you, you need to remember two things about the builder. The first thing is, uh, Unlike the MLIR context, this is actually one of the things that uh, I didn't get at first. I thought since we have one MLIR context, we should have one builder as well. That's not the case. We can you can build the builder whenever you want based on the same context. And the second thing is the builder. Like, let's imagine we have a, like a file, right? We want to create. Uh, we want to write our IR representation, sorry, we want to write the IR in that file. Um, builder basically has a cursor that points to a specific location in that file. When we create a new operation using that builder and insert it into the file, it 
the new operation will like start in the cursor location so let's say the cursor points to the line 10 and when we create a new operation that operation will start at line 10 like the text representation of it right start at, at line 10 and continues to uh, wherever it needs to go like the length of the operation is important there and by doing that we're moving the cursor to another location so the next operation will end up in a different location so sometimes we need to actually manually uh, change the location of the cursor for example we want to have a function to, uh, function like operation uh, we create the kind of the prototype of the function and then we, when we want to create generate the body we move the cursor the builder cursor to another location and start generating operations from there uh, actually uh, while it was uh, like a, just an example we don't have a file we like it was just an imaginary example in real life we build everything in memory and that cursor that i uh, i mentioned is kind of some location in a graph right you move it around and start generating operation uh, and like, expand the graph that way um Obviously, when we generate operations using the builder, all the operation had to be wrapped in a module. And we uh, MLIR has a thing called uh, module OP or like module by itself is an like operation. So it has the same interface. And finally, in case of Serene, it has a name space that wraps the entire module. It, uh, it like, depends on how the JIT goes in the future uh, certain namespaces might have more than one module to deal with but for now we can think of namespaces and module in a one to uh, one mapping as a one to one mapping okay so we pass around the MLIR context we create builders we use that builder to generate operations but as we discussed in the previous episode, we need to have a dialect. So either we, we need to use other dialects or we need to create one dialect for our own, which is the case for us. We have two options to create a new dialect, either uh, created in C++, like purely in C++, C++ uh, or use table gen. Creating it in C++, uh, can be really hard because there's too so much detail to take care of and like you have to spend too much time on it that's where uh table gen basically shines uh the MI, mlir engineers actually created a backend for table gen you can uh, create everything in ods that's what it calls uh and Table gen will generate everything for you. That's what we did today. Uh, we're going to do today. Actually, I did today. I did already. We're going to talk about it today. And um, the name of the IR that we have currently is SLIR, like Serene Language Intermediate Representation, right? But probably it's going to change in the future. We're going to have another. Uh, IR completely different than this one because like this one is just a minimal set of operations just to uh, get going and like to uh, get to the more interesting part of the compiler and create the wiring but for now it's good enough but it might change it I don't know I might rename it or create a new one totally the goal of SLIR is to actually model the AST as a intermediate representation. So I expect a one-on-one -on -one mapping from uh, AST nodes to uh, SLIR operations, more or less, but uh, that's the entire goal. We can like, uh, in future episode, probably it's in, in the next episode, you'll see how we're going to actually an analyze the uh, SLIR and generate uh, another IR from SLIR to eventually get to the LLVM IR. Okay, 
in order to generate IR, uh, SLIR, basically, we have some few steps to uh, take. Before uh, anything, when we actually, in the constructor of the string context, as you can see here, we can load our dialects, different dialects that we might have. As you can see here, we I already loaded the serene dialect, the SLIR thingy that we're going to talk about today, and a standard ops dialect or STD dialect. If you need to use any other dialect, you have to load it first, obviously, and here is uh, like how you do it. You use the MLIR context to load the dialect and obviously MLIR context will be the owner and take care of everything. For now, we only use these two. So the first step is to define a dialect. We define a dialect like in case of uh, Serene, we use the uh, table gen and ODS stuff to generate the dialect. This is, uh, to be honest, I don't know how to actually, uh, what to call this syntax. I call it ODS because uh, I saw it on the MLIR website, like documentation. I don't know whether I'm uh, uh, close or not, but let's just stick to ODS for now. Um, okay, so what happens here is we describe what we want from um, uh, a dialect and then we use table gen to generate different files out of this one. It generates header files, uh, CPP files, like everything for us. So when you see, uh, like, a, what do you call these in uh, C++? Like macros like this, right? Like, oh, preprocessor, sorry. When you see a preprocessor like this, it, it reminds you of like a header file, right? And events, like, the fact is, it ends up in the header file as well. So we treat it as a header file for now. We describe some stuff and obviously we use end if to uh, finish up. Um, like other programming languages, like this ODS stuff, uh, you can include other definitions, other uh, descriptions from other files and MLIR has a tons of things to use. I'm going to talk about them uh, briefly, uh, but uh, most of them are for interfaces or traits. So when we create a uh, nice thing about the ODS is that when you like most of the functionality that you might need in your dialect is modeled in different traits or interfaces uh, and shipped with MLIR. So you can just use those uh, traits in your operation to like achieve what you want or create your own. The first step is to actually define a dialect. We define a dialect like uh, roughly like this, right? Like this block. So at first we define like the this def form here translates into a class later on. So we, we end up with a class called serene dialect that inherits from dialect class. It has a name, it has a like a name space to leave in some summary description. And the nice thing is uh, we can actually generate, um, what do you call it, documentation out of uh, the description here or the summary here. So we create a dialect like as simple as this, like this actually. And then we uh, we're going to create a base class for all, uh, all the operations that we have. So we create a base class called Serino P. Again, it translates to a class somewhere. And I'm not going to talk about like these, uh, the uh, details here. It needs its own uh, episode, and we don't uh, we don't want to spend time on it yet. Just the high level. We create a base class for our operations. I'm not going to even talk about the types right now because we don't use them. But here's the important part. So this is how we create uh, create an operation. So right now. We're describing an operation called value op, 
value operation that inherits from Serino P and it the name of this operation like the textual uh, name of it is value if you remember from the previous uh, episode uh, in an actual dialect in the sorry in the MLIR when we want op operations are in form of like the, like something like this dialect name dot operation name right so in case of value op it would be serene dot value right um like the dialect itself it can have a description a summary i didn't put anything here just because it's going to go away but the most important stuff is here like argument results and probably the builder or verifier even in the argument we define how many arguments this uh, operation gets and what are the types for now it's only one and the type is an i64 attribute which we assign the name value to it the it called value for no reason it doesn't have anything to do with the value here if i rename it to another thing like i don't know like apple for example that would be fine right sorry 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 made a mess okay so it was value okay and the result of uh value operation is an i64 it's a value of type i64 why i64 just to keep things simple i chose to use just one type right we don't use any other type for the wiring and when we're, we're done with the uh, first stage of the compiler and we go to like design the actual language that's where uh, new types comes in we have to create a, like a type system but for now let's just stick to one each operation can uh, have its own verifier what's a verifier so actually i'm going to show you an actual uh usage of a verifier later on but for now uh whenever we create an operation it, like each operation might have its own criteria later on when we build the entire module op we can call to verify it has like a verify function uh, function member that verifies every operation in that module and this way we can like actually uh create a mechanism that validate the logic for us i'm going to show you an example but for now let's say you pass a, something beside an i64 to a value uh, operation and when we call the verify uh, function member it's going to raise an error saying that yeah the types doesn't match you can uh, by default every operation has a verifier but if you need a, like a specific uh, verifier you can de define it like that so what happens here is that it's going to call a function called verify or whatever you name it in this name space and pass a uh, value operation as the only like that specific value operation as the only argument that we don't need it for now and finally you can have uh, by default there's there would be some builder functions that the builder object will use to generate your uh, operation for you uh, like a instance of your class for you but you can have it uh, have more basically in our case we want to have a, like a, another version or uh, yeah another version of the build member function that gets uh unsigned uh, ice in 64 and create a, like a value operation based on that we're going to use it uh when we get to uh 
to the expiration classes and like AST nodes and we'll see it in action there. Um, and moving on, we have another uh, function here called, uh, sorry, another operation called FNOP or function operation. It inherits from the serine OP, but as you can see, there's like a bunch of other stuff in here that uh, value OP didn't have any of this. These are called uh, operation traits. And these are the things that I was talking about. You can use them to create, uh, to actually use some of the common functionality that MLIR provides uh, for your uh, different, like for your operation, right? Um, for example, I'm not going to talk about them right now. Uh, again, later on when we want to design the actual IR, we need to talk talk about uh, specific traits uh, at that time. But for now, for example, isolated from above says that uh, function OP might have a region. It, it should have a region and that region is isolated from the above scope, right? So you have to pass the uh, arguments uh, explicitly to it. Uh, I hope I didn't make a mistake because I can't remember correctly, but that was something like this. Okay, and again, summary, description, arguments. In this case, we have three arguments. The first one is a, a string attribute called name, a dictionary of attributes called args for the input arguments of the function, and an optional attribute called seam visibility, which basically says whether this function is a public function or a private function, public private in sense of a namespace. Uh, also, function OP has a region. It's like the regions, it can have more than one region, but it has just one. And that region is like any kind of region. Any region is kind of a type here. And finally, it returns an I64. Why I64? Again, because we just want to have one type in our compiler for now. We don't use any builder type for uh, function OP, so let's remove all the stuff that I used before. Uh, actually, I tried to use and never used them. And finally, the last operation, which is a return OP. Again, it uh, inherits from serine OP, uh, the name is return, and it has some traits. For example, has parent is really obvious. It should only appear in the context of a function OP. Anywhere else, it like MLIR will yell at us saying that, yeah, it should be under a function OP. It should be a return-like, uh, return and it's a terminator. I'm going to talk about the, uh, these traits uh, in a different episode, let's move uh, forward. Finally, it has just one uh, argument we call operand, and it has it can have any type. It can have any type, and I use something here called assembly format, just to make things interesting, uh, more interesting. When we dump our, uh, when we want to dump our IR into a textual format. Um, by default, MLIR use some default printer to print every, print everything, right? You might not like uh, the format of, uh, that that default printer uses for your for one of your operations, just because it might be simpler than that. In our case, return op is quite simple. It's, it's, it's like return this thing, right? We don't need we don't need any extra information. So if you if you want to do that and like change the format, you have two options. Either use a assembly format, which is much easier like this, or use your own printer. And if you use your own printer, you have to use your own parser as well. We're not going to go down that path right now. We're going to stick with uh, assembly format. So how it works is that, okay, the new assembly format, the new, when you want to print this thing out, the new format is first, the attribute dictionary should appear in the format after the name and then operand, which was the only input, followed by a colon and the type of that operand. There's a, uh, there's some documentation on uh, assembly format on MLIR's uh, docs. You can have a look. 
it's uh, super easy to use and builder we're not interested okay so we ended up with a really simple dialog with three operations only right so that's how we uh, define our dialog now we have to set up table gen and basically set up the um, build pipeline to generate the c++ files out of this one in order to do that we have to take a look at the cmake file so it's quite simple what what's happening is we instruct our uh, build uh, build pipeline to use the dialect.td the, the file just uh, the file that i just showed you as a target definition and then uh basically it says that okay i want table gen to use this file right uh, roughly translate to that and then we want to uh generate all the declarations right we want to use all uh generate all the operation the uh, declarations in a file called ops.h.inc and the definitions of those into another file called ops.cpp.inc and then the same for the dialect declarations and definitions they're going to end up in a file called dialect.h.inc and dialect.cpp.inc and finally we we will name this target something and then probably if i remember correctly here in the cmake file for the lib serene we use that name somewhere da, da, da. oh yeah here we added as a dependency to the thing that we're going to generate uh to to our artifact build artifact that's how table like we can use table gen uh that's it that's it oh one more thing when uh when table gen generates uh, these files it, they're going to be in the include directory basically beside the cmake file in the build directory so you have to make sure that your build directory is part of uh, the path to, uh, to your build directory is part of the paths that cmake uses to build your project um, when, we, uh, when we set up the uh, cmake like this we're going to end up with uh, let me show you okay we, we, like this is actually the result of the generation this is uh ops.h.inc as you can see table gen generated a bunch of stuff for us like an operation adapter we don't care about that right now the um, operations themselves and uh, basically just a declaration right it's a long file it's yeah almost 250 uh, 250 lines of code and if we take a look at the definition file which is like the cpp file it's the same right uh, i want to show you something in here actually let's find a good example yeah remember the builder uh, functions that we talked about that you can add your builder function here is uh, the actual code that table gen generates for us. Uh, when you create a new one, uh, a new builder function, right? When you generate a new one, you can, in our case, we created, um, actually, we, we added the definition as well. If you don't include the definition, you have to uh, implement and define that builder function that you ask from table gen yourself in a cpp file right but it's okay for now we can escape that one too so um actually uh, what was it value okay and there should be a build somewhere oh yeah i'm doing this Mm. okay 
So these are, uh, as you can see, this one is exactly the one that we describe even the comment lives here as well, right? So, um, yeah, that's how you can actually generate uh, new builder functions. And let's have a look at the other one, uh, one dialect.h.inc, which is uh, reserved, like contains the dialect declaration. If you want to use C++, uh, like purely to define your dialect, that's like you have to do all these yourself. So that's why table gen is actually really good to, to do all this. And yeah, you have to write all this yourself. And if we look at the definition, nothing special here. So when we end up, uh, when we created all this, we uh, need to actually use them. Just generating the files won't um, do anything for us. So to that end, we have another file called dialect.h. This file, uh, first of all, the header files, if you use anything in your dialect, in your uh, ODS file, like in here, right? For example, if I use any trait in here, uh, like return, like th th this specific trait uh, caused me a, a lot of headache because the mistake that I made was that I, I, I thought if, if I use a, if I include a trait or an other ODS file in my ODS, uh, then table gen will take care of the includes and everything. Like it will include the right header for me and blah, blah, blah. But I was wrong. So when I use return like here, uh, like when I wanted to build the project, uh, I like I had to deal with an error saying that yeah return like doesn't exist in uh, I don't remember the name space but in some name space right and I I was wrong basically my assumption was wrong when you use something you have to actually include the header file yourself manually in your uh, project which in 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 our case we have a dialect.h include a bunch of stuff in it that we need uh, for our dialect and finally we include the dialect.h.inc here and then the operation uh, the ops.h.inc here as well this thing is here describes what to include basically it's a flag that when you uh, when you say i want just the operation classes when you include it it only uh, you include only that piece in your uh, uh, header file. That's it. You have to include both ink files. And if we take a look at the definition file, it's the same. But here is the tricky part. So if you if you if you saw it in the where was it dialect dot ink dialect has a uh, has a member function called initialize. We have to implement that right. And this is how we implement it. We just use add operation that adds bunch of operations into our dialect and then include the def, uh, definition file of our operations. By specifying get ops list, it only return like you will only include the list of operations. You can have a look at the uh, ops.cpp and look for get uh, op list and you'll it's super easy you, you'll see how it works and finally we want the definitions themselves like the actual implementation so that's uh, that's how we actually use table gen to generate a new dialect so that's uh, all good now we have a dialect and as you saw in the what was the name as you saw here, we loaded in our context, in the constructor of, uh, constructor of our context. So we're all set to actually start generating uh, our new IR. But in order to see how it works, we need to have a small trip to our main function. So 
this is the actual main function of our compiler it's a it's in a file called uh, terrain.cpp in the bin directory i didn't talk about it up until now and right now i'm going to skip it as uh, much as i can because i'm pretty sure i'm going to change this file quite a lot in the future and to to be honest like even if you compare it to the math there to the master it's actually really different now but to show you how it works and like where is the entry point of the entire code generation i'm going to i have to show you something from here so we have different actions we decide what to do based on the action and one of the most important thing here is that after we do the uh, semantic analysis phase and things like that sorry we get to a point that if the action was dump slir or mlir or lir just use the member function dump from the namespace right that's kind of we can think of it as the starting point of, uh, to our uh, IR generation. So let's uh, have a look uh, at the dump. So in the dump function, beside uh, all this like debug information that we don't need, we call to a generate function that returns a maybe module of OP. Um, basically, that generate function from namespace is what we call to generate a new module op for our namespace if we we'll have a look at that one so it returns a module op uh, maybe module op which which as you can see in the uh, top right it's a result type that uh, the success case is uh, uh, is an owning uh, op reference to a mlir module and the fail uh, fail case is a boolean uh i wrote this code uh like a long time ago i guess and back then we didn't have any diagnostic engine today that we have that engine i changed this type to be something else so uh, don't pay attention that much to the re uh, return time the uh, return time the o o the only important aspect of the return type here is that owning opref that class is really important so basically when you have an operation somewhere some uh somewhere in the future you have to actually destroy it right that's the c plus uh, plus thingy uh, like freeing uh, freeing up the uh the resources like old c stuff but the thing is in order to uh destroy a operation destroy an operation it doesn't ma matter what it is you have to call the arrays uh function uh, member function on that operation so what i had before was to call that arrays function in the uh, in the what do you call it the, uh, the structure of namespace uh, class so here here i used to say like sorry module dot arrays right that was how I actually destroyed the module when the namespace uh, got destroyed. And that wasn't nice. So I looked around and I found uh, I found this thing in uh, in a code example of MLIR. Where is it now here? So that owning opref is basically just an entity a wrapper around uh, an operation which owns the reference and when it goes out of the scope right just like other uh, what do you call it other values in c plus plus it gets destroyed and but it's smart enough to know that it has to call the arrays function and blah 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 so uh what it does is pretty simple it just makes uh it destroys the operation when it goes out of the scope so let's see what we do in the generate function we create a new builder that op builder thing that we talked about earlier we pass a reference to mlir context to it so basically we can say we create a builder for that context 
and then we will use that builder to generate our operations we create an empty module with an unknown location unknown because basically we need to pass the location here the actual location but again we don't care about uh, like these kind of details for now and um, because like if we want to have a location actually the, the actual reason is we have to have an ns form like a lisp ns form we don't have that so we either have to pass uh, like a file address here with the, like a like where we actually included this namespace or it should be a repl or a user namespace or a, something that demonstrate demonstrate that this namespace is used as the entry point to our uh, application but um, we don't have to deal with all that so i use a get unknown location actually in the new version with the source map and uh, source manager and everything this thing is gone so we know where to uh, we know where we actually load an ns from and a name a name for that module which is the name of our namespace and then uh, we get the AST of that namespace. If you remember from episode uh, seven, each namespace has its own AST. So we get the tree, we get the AST tree, and for each node, we call a, a member function called generate IR. So X here uh, will be like an expression. So X is an expression and it has to have an in the expression class, uh, if you remember, we had a generate IR, which we all, always skipped. Today, we're, go we're going to talk about that. The first uh, argument is uh, is the a reference to the namespace, the current namespace, and we pass the module to uh, generate IR as well. Basically, just because when we generate stuff, we want to append it to the module. Finally, we call the verify uh, function on that module so it the verify will will walk the graph will, will actually cause the verify member function on every operation and make sure that everything is uh, in good shape if there was an error or something went wrong we're going to emit an error this this emit error uh, we're going to have another episode about diagnostic engine but it basically calls to the diagnostic engine and uh, causes some kind of like it's going to bubble up to the surface and blow up, right? But for now, it's fine. And we're going to uh, erase the module. Why we erase the module here? Because like it failed since the, we still uh, didn't create any owning reference here. We have to delete it manually, like destroy it manually. Return an error. I know this is ugly, but in the newer version, when, when I created that, diagnostic engine this thing is gone so we return an optional value and then we run some passes if you remember from previous episode when we run uh, like uh, mlir and llvm has uh, like a pass infrastructure you can run some passes on your module to do some uh, depends on the pass like either optimization or rewrites or analysis different things that's where we run them we're not going to talk about them today uh, and finally if everything was right just return the module and create that uh, owning reference from it okay um actually something bothers me here what's the type of this thing oh yeah module so oh, i'm right so uh let's have a look at what was it x yeah as a reminder we had a, like an expression class which was the kind of the abstract class that every uh, ast node has to inherit from and it has the generate ir function that we just used this is the signature if you want to have a look at but let's have a look at different nodes Oh, let's just start by number first. So in case of a number, all we do is we're going to create a builder 
actually you know what uh, i think i made a mistake it's not a mistake but why did i create this builder in here you don't need to right because we create them later probably it's a leftover from oh 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 oh, oh. yeah I, I remember i remember that. <laughs> because of this get unknown location it needs a builder that's why we created uh, that one uh but anyway in case of a number we create a builder and then this is how we create an uh, operation so we use that builder to create a new operation in this case we want to create a new value operation and then we convert our location to an MLIR location we're going to take a look at that one too and finally has the current value of 2i64 to this uh, value operation and as you can see 2i64 is basically just converts the value of the current node into a i64 so excuse me so we use the exact same build their function that we provided in our uh, dialect.td and we pass a location every every builder that uh, every build function that the builder use expect a MLIR location right uh, and in the newer version we uh, I created a like a member function for the location range itself so it returns a like a location MLIR location we don't have to do this all the time but for now it's like this and we pass the integer that we want to uh, embed into our like to use it with our value operation and if the value operation if there wasn't a uh, like just to validate it if it wasn't null uh, push it back to uh, the module append it to the module uh, simple easy enough uh, let's have a look at this thing it's quite simple uh, create another builder we use the uh, rappel uh, as the file name because uh, if, if sorry if the file name if the name and space didn't have any file name we use the raffle as the file name and then we use the location and call uh, sorry the line number and the column number and then use a file line call location it, it's a, like a type of location in MLIR there's different uh, different type of location like a call site or different things even like that unknown location that you saw uh, you can have a look uh, look at them on, in, in the documentation but we need to create our own later on to use the uh, to use the ns as well so it, we wanted to keep the ns name or some other uh, information uh, as well okay and uh, let's have a look at the def one the def node uh, where is the def node okay so it's quite simple um if the type was an fn like if we try to define a function if you just do a like as a refresher def is a node type that is car uh, like directly correspondent to a def form so we would say def something so like a name and the value right it, it it will translate into a def node after semantic analysis and here is what the def uh, IR, actually the def node uh, generates uh, how it generates the ir actually so if the value type and the value will be like the thing that we try to uh, like assign a name to it right not assign a name to it bind a name to it if it was a function type then we call uh, the generate ir on that function and simply return nothing special right and that's the only thing that diff does because again we want the most basic compiler ever we want to do the wiring first it will be changed in the future but for now it's fine we just want to make things work and have a, like insight into different pieces to be able to actually see the whole picture and then design everything uh, 
with the, like a uh, what do you call it like a, with a good vision uh, for the future so if we have a look at the uh, yes the function the function node and its generate ir function okay so here's the a little bit more complicated part we create a location again based on the mlr uh, mlir uh, location we create uh, we get the context this context is the serine context that uh, wraps the mlir one create a builder and then start uh, doing our thing so we create an, a small vector a small vector is it is a like a llvm type it's it's similar to std vectors but it's more uh, efficient uh, it contains some named attributes and this number here is like uh, how many elements do you want to preserve with your vector like allocate with your vector at first like four is a, like a good number uh, depends on your use case it might be different right i use four so we keep that uh, vector for our arguments and then we loop over the arguments and try to uh, dynamically cast them to a symbol if they were a symbol if they uh, weren't this symbols we have to raise an error and return basically and if you remember emit error will uh, cause an like a diagnostic to be raised blah 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 we're going to see about that in the future you can think of it as just raise an error and re return but if they were actually uh, symbols then we're going to create a, a name attribute that the name is that symbol name so it would be like the argument name uh, would be the name of this attribute and the value would be the type of that argument which in our case is only i64 in the future for example when we have a type system we have to look up the type match the types here and do some type checkings to create the uh, correct, correct name that attribute when we t uh, took care of the arguments then um, uh, we create a function so like before like the function op actually this thing has to go away like the value op sorry uh, we use builder.create we ask it to create a function op uh, fn op for us we pass it a location but uh, as you can see on the top right, it, ha it gets a different set of uh, arguments. It needs a return type, it needs a name, uh, and it needs uh, like a, a named attribute um, argument to kind of reflect the input arguments to the function that we created already, and we just uh, create a dictionary attribute out of it. And finally, whether this thing is a public function or a private function, we, which we hard coded public for now, we can change it in the future. If the function, uh, if we couldn't create the function, emit an error and return. Otherwise, let's go for the body. So, if you remember from the dialoxing, where is it? Here. So, we uh, where is it? Oh, here. We create, a, we ask for just one region, like any region called body. So here we actually get that body. We get a, ref, a reference to that body and we create a, like a empty block. As you can see, we create a block by like allocating it on the heap and push it back to the body. We, uh, I told you in the previous episode that region can have multiple, uh, multiple blocks. This thing is our entry block. Um, if you look into how the function OP of the standard dialect works, it's more elegant and like it has like an entry block or uh, and it can have like different types of blocks. But for now, for our case, uh, we don't care about any of that just yet because again we want the most basic thing so we push that block into our body and set the builder uh, like the builder cursor or the insert point to that block to the start of that block so we move the move that 
imaginary cursor around and then start to generate uh, operations. We create another value OP um, with the value of zero just as a just to have something in in our function because we don't want to actually uh, gen keep generating everything recursively for our compiler because of the simplicity that we're looking after. Uh, so that's why we just want something in our uh, body and that would be like a, a value op with the value of zero the get result here will return the value of that operation so from the previous episode if you remember um it should be here i guess mm, yes here yeah. If you can remember, these uh, SSA forms here are values, right? So get result will return the name of this thing for the value. For example, oh, here's the value, right? This is the value operation. This uh, number two here will be our value, and base uh, and this red val will point to that number two. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's move on. And finally, we create a, a return operation that returns that ret value, return value of value OP. So that number two, right? If the return value wasn't there, emit an error, erase the function and return. Otherwise, our job with the function is done, push it back to the module and then done. For the... Uh, for now we have we, we only have this for our uh, for our um ir we don't have any uh, more operations or we don't generate anything else very basic stuff so let's see it in action actually let's mark this thing as done we walked ast and generated as well so this thing is done as well so to have a look at how it works. So as you can see, uh, I want to emit SLIR here and the, I want to like parse this file and the build directory is the current directory. So when we generate that, uh, IR, it, it will look like something like this. This is the textual representation of our IR, which was in memory. We dumped it into a text, uh, text format. Um, <clears throat> here's our function operation. It gets, a, it gets a region and one block. This is that block. We generate a value operation, which has uh, value zero, as you saw, we hard coded this thing. It returns uh, an SSA form called two, and then we return that two. So there's like two things I, I want to actually talk to you about. Uh, the first thing is, uh, as you can see, this return value has a like a costume assembly format. Uh, that's where our assembly, like our costume assembly formatter comes into picture. If I, if I, um, if I remove it or comment it out from here and then try again, you'll see the difference, right? But we'll do that in a second. Um, and the second thing is we don't see any location information here, right? That was one of my questions, which I got the answer just before this uh, recording this episode. So by default, the default printer of MLIR don't in, uh, print out the location information but it doesn't mean that uh, we miss them right the reason is because they might be long so the uh, mlir engineers def uh, decided to not include this in the um, dump information in order to do that we have to go back to our namespace and dump function right we use the dump function that basically we you saw what it does. Instead of that, we need to use, uh, sorry, we need to use a print function. So 
if we call print we we give it the stream that we want to print the current operation into that uh, stream and a bunch of flags a flag is like an op printing flag that uh, actually defines the behavior in our case we enable the debugging info the debug info and pass that flag as uh, to instruct the print to actually include the debug info so with those two changes if i actually um sorry no 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 if i compile the whole thing again oh it's going to take a long time uh, so uh while we're waiting for this thing um for the future episode, we're going to have a look at how the pass manager works and how we can use passes to rewrite and lower some of the uh, operation into other dialects, in our case, STD dialects, and then to LLVM uh, IR. Uh, that was the whole uh, generation, IR generation in uh, like really brief uh episode it took a long time actually but uh again we stick to the basics we don't want any complicated stuff for now to have the most basic compiler that we can have to then uh have insight into different pieces especially like uh later on i learned few things about linking and things like that that changed my vision of how to design a compiler so it's good to stick with the basics for now uh, and later on we have time to uh, create the actual thing so if we run the whole thing again so here's two uh, three actually thing that you need to pay attention to as you can see since we actually um, didn't use our custom formatter the return operation just showed up as like a regular uh operation right so it doesn't look it looks complicated that's why we use that formatter to keep it simple it, it will help us to debug this thing in the future the second thing is now we see the locations right the location is here everything has a location but what's up with this thing location uh, like a hashtag location or what i don't know what to call that character these are called location analysis. Uh, apparently they're new to MLIR. I didn't know about them. I asked in the MLIR channel and we had a discussion and I just learned about them actually today. Uh, there's something called like type analysis in uh, MLIR that you can name like, like something like a type def in C or uh, C++. You can create a a short name for a, like a longer type or like a, a specific a spe a specialization of a type and use that name uh, in place of that type the same concept applies to uh, location analysis as well so we call this thing a location like we name a location somewhere uh, called loc1 uh, loc2 and things like that and then at the end we have a like a kind of a table like saying that says log zero is unknown, log one is rep from line, uh, sorry, line zero at column 10, and log two is line one, column 11, right? So that's how you get the locations. I I, I spent like two days thinking why, uh, what I missed that the locations doesn't show up in the IR. Um, I guess that wraps it up for today, folks. Uh, Thanks for uh, sticking around. It was like a long episode. If you, again, if you like my work, if you <clears throat> like wh uh, what I'm doing, please uh, consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like. If you're interested in Serene itself, please uh, 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 reach out to me. There's tons of things to do and I could use a hand. Uh, I definitely will. I could use your help. Um, that's it for today, guys. Um, have a great day. See you in the next episode.